Hello world! Hi! In my previous video, we used Python and Pandas to do a VLOOKUP in order to uh, combine two data sources into one data frame. And so what we did was we took the FIPS code and merged that into the parish or county name, they call them parishes in Louisiana, and the population percentage change from the 2010 to 2020 Census Bureau. And that V looked up allowed us to put it all in one data frame, which we used to make this. And this is the subject of today's video. This is a plotly chloropleth chart. And what we're showing here is a visual representation of the population percentage change in all the counties or parishes in Louisiana. So as we can see by our scaling colors is uh, zero to negative. So the county lost people um, we show in red here. And then counties or parishes that went from zero up, so they gained population, is in this nice green color. So where I live in Bossier Parish or Bossier County, we've had an increase of 10%. Um, if you look at the city right next to us, the Caddo Parish, they've had a negative 6.6% rate. So pretty interesting. And so we can go into the code now. But first, welcome to the 170th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in data analytics, AI, for, uh, visual, um, digital assistants, etc. And uh, like this video if you're going to use it for your project. And so one of the chief things I want for a digital assistant, like I've talked about in many videos if you're a subscriber, is to have a comprehensive dashboard that gives me economic insights into the local and state economy, you know, to help me make wise business decisions. So what we did was in the previous video, which you can watch uh, first, is we created a data frame. So we use Panda, so import pandas as PD. We imported requests. We used um, from BS4, we import beautiful suit. And then in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use URL lib dot request and import URL open. Now, PyCharm is yelling at me because version 2.7 does not have this module. However, we're in Python 3.7, so I could ignore this error if I wanted to. We're going to import JSON. Then we're going to import, um, and this was in the last video, import plotly.express as px. So the first thing you're going to do is you need to find what's called the GeoJSON for your project. And so um, this is a common one for people in the U.S. This right here from GitHub is, uh, and I could put this in the description, is the um, GeoJSON for all the counties with the FIPS. So let's say a common... Um, so a lot of data visualization is done in India. And so you can just Google GeoJSON India states, for example, if you wanted to do the states in India. So just it's uh, just Google GeoJSON and then whatever you're trying to do. So you can do, this has all the counties in America. So it's a pretty large file. So with this URL open, which we imported here, and that URL is this... Um, github json file as response we're going to set it up as counties so all the counties equals json.load and we'll pass it this response here and that's why we imported json now this one right here this is what we did in the last video and this just shows um, when we print all the columns of a data frame in pycharm similarly this data frame one is pulling all the census data and that is uh, covered in the previous video 
this whole block of text where we use beautiful soup and we find all the states and counties and then we create a second data frame is also in the previous video and lastly the merging of it so just this one right here data frame equals pd dot merge we're going to merge data frame one data frame two we're going to merge it on the geographic area and then how is the inner so the inner is the different ways of merging data sets so there's inner outer left and right and we discussed those in the previous video now something different is i didn't want this to be a label that's a pretty long label to be using in a map so i did a data frame so df dot rename the columns which was this long column and this colon so we're going to change it to just say percentage change and we're going to leave that as in place equals true right so this means since this is true that it just replaces it and leaves everything else in place then we're going to uh what's it called with this new column called percentage change we're going to make it a float and then we're going to multiply it by a hundred so why am I doing all of that before we start our chloropleth map? So let me show you by printing it through each stage. And you can kind of see why I chose to do this. So first we're going to print the data frame. And you can see why we're doing this. Move my face back here. Okay. So right now we have all of this data which we did in the last video and this column which comes from the census column is percent change in population 2010 to 2020 and then we have these negative and positive floats to the sixth decimal point so the first thing we do is we're going to rename the column right so let's just look at that and see what that means okay so you know it's not that huge of a thing you can kind of see what we're doing but all we're doing is renaming the column to percent change so now you can see the numbers so next we're going to make this a float because right now it's a string and the reason why we need to do it to float is because we can multiply it by a hundred which gives you the percentage so this makes this negative 6.8 and we can see that by coming down here and printing the data frame with these two changes so it's first we change it to a float so we can do math and then we actually multiply it by a hundred all right so like i said this change to negative 6.8 the column is called percent change so this is a negative 6.8 percent change and that's what we're doing here data frame you put the column you want equals data frame the column that you're talking about and then this is how you change the type to float I could change that to integer if I wanted to um, but then I wouldn't have the accuracy I don't like changing the accuracy um, then we're going to do a data frame this column equals data frame this column dot multiply and then you pass it whatever you want okay let's delete all of this all right now to build our actual map so the first thing you're going to do is do a figure so fig equals px which was plotly express so plot px dot choropleth and then we're going to pass it the data frame then we're going to say GeoJSON. So how do you find the counties equals counties? That's what we did at the very top here with this file. Then the locations are going to be using the FIPS codes. The FIPS codes comes from the merge data frame that we established here. Or I'm sorry, uh, in this new data frame where we merge data frame one and data frame two the color is going to be percent change so the color determines right here and is going off the percentage change sorry 
Now we're going to use what's called a color continuous scale. And this is red, yellow, green. So what the heck is that, right? So, and I can put this in the description. This is using what's called a continuous color scale. And this is where we're asking Plotly to kind of figure out what we're doing um, when we pass this argument. And so here are all the different um, built-in sequential color scales. Um, and you can kind of see what you, you know, depending on what you want to show. Now just know um, your data visualization principles that most people consider red as either negative in integers or negative as in bad news and green as in positive. Um, so I am making an assumption here that if a county has lost population that that's a bad thing. If you don't want to make that correlation, then um, you pick a different color. Also, if you work in a different country, just know that their colors mean a lot different. So in Korea, red did not mean negative, it meant something positive. And so just keep aware of your data visualization principles. Next, the range color. So I don't like hard um, inputting data, but I think this is a fair scale. It's rare that a county will lose you know, 20% as I looked at all the, these um, values here. So this one, negative 18. This one, negative 21, negative 17. So as you can see, I chose the color scale of negative 20 and 20. If I chose negative 100 and 100, the colors would not change as drastically. So you kind of have to know your data on what you're trying to show. Next, the scope is USA. Um, if you don't put this scope in the USA, I'll show you um, how I got just Louisiana to show, but it, it'll default to the world. So if you want to change this to Asia, like let's say you're from India, then you just change it to Asia. So the scope for us is USA. The hover name, so you get to choose what happens when you hover over it. So this FIPS and population percentage change is default in there. But see how it says Bossier up here? Webster County, Claiborne, Union, Cameron, etc. That is right here what we determined as hover name equals geographic area. And the labels, uh, I wanted it to say um, population percentage change instead of just percentage change. So the column is called percentage change. I wanted that to be different. And as you can see, it says population percentage change here. All right. So you put all of those variables. There's a lot more and you can see in the documentation. And then I wanted to update the geos. And so basically what you're doing is you're saying, what's the boundaries of your figure? And I just want it to wherever there's a, a um, information in the locations. And locations is defined as our FIPS codes. And then everything else is false. So I don't want anything else visible. So what happens when we comment this out? Right? Let's close this and rerun our charts. And you'll see that um, since we have this scope as USA, that we should see the whole of USA and then a tiny Louisiana. There you go. So we only have FIPS data for in here. So it's only showing that. And now this is a Plotly dashboard. So you can use your wheel mouse to, um, you know, scroll into it, but I know that I just, you know, daily want to see just Louisiana. So what we do is we update the geos and we just want anything that has data in this locations column and then everything else is false. And that brings us to the original chart. And not only that, it kind of centers it for you because it finds the center of that data. And then lastly, we do a fig.show, and that calls the chart. So this is me opening it up for the first time. And there you go. Louisiana, for the most part, is centered on our screen with the population change. So this is the kind of the second video we've done on some Louisiana data. Um, what we're going to do in a future video is 
add this to an interactive Plotly dashboard. Now census data changes every 10 years, right? So this isn't very uh, insightful for us besides a flash in the pan data set. Um, but as we build this interactive dashboard, this will be more real-time data and we will use Python to download the data automatically every day, kind of autonomously and show us new charts every day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave a comment if this is interesting or it helped you on your project. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.